18 Genshin Impact Character Card Illustration Poses is what I drew to learn more about poses, which if you're interested in drawing characters are something you likely want to know more about. Poses can be expressive, help to show the personality of a character you're drawing and convey a specific mood and atmosphere for the image. Perspective, the body's proportions, the angles of the body parts, these would be some aspects that influence each pose and things I would also like to look more into in today's video. Recently I've been studying the Genshin Impact art style. I've been fascinated by the character designs and card illustrations ever since I first saw them. Along with my studies I drew every Genshin Impact character card illustration pose, meaning just a body of each character using sketches and line art. And for this video I talk about the process of doing this exercise and what I learned from it. I mentioned patterns I discovered in the poses used in the illustrations, what makes the Genshin poses stand out, as well as how you can learn from this for your own pose illustrations. Since the whole exercise I did here was based on observation, looking at the cards and drawing what I saw, I also include some tips for this as well. First I want to describe what I did when I say I drew all the card illustration poses. I took the following steps to do this. First I started with a quick gesture drawing without guidelines. Step 2 was then to draw guidelines. Step 3 was to adjust the guidelines so they roughly match the cards. Step 4 was to draw a basic body using the guidelines and observing the proportions. And step 5 was then to trace over the poses in the card illustrations. Through this I wanted to see how my own first impression when drawing in step 1 as well as my basic body drawings with guidelines from step 4 would be different from the Genshin poses. Comparing the results from step 2 to 3 for 1, the differences in the guidelines, as well as step 1 to step 4 and step 5 for the differences in the proportions helped me to do this. One thing to note here is that I first only use the cuts on which the bodies are sometimes cut off. I would add the cut off features myself at first and later on got some of the wish illustrations in which the characters are shown in their cuts pose with the full body. This applies to almost all characters that were released from version 1.4 and like this I could also compare my own added body parts with the proportions used for the Genshin wish illustrations. Next let's move on to some of my discoveries along the way and the differences or tendencies I determined I have when comparing my body drawings to the Genshin ones. My bodies tended to be thinner, more flat and not as much in perspective. For the added legs and feet which were most commonly cut off I saw that I tended to draw the legs slightly shorter. Oftentimes the angles I drew for the bodies were less extreme. You can also see that for a few of the poses I drew I made notes on the side in indicating what was different guideline-wise compared to the poses. Often this would just include slight position and proportion differences. From this I then started to notice common differences and tried to pay more attention to, for example, intentionally drawing wider bodies since I knew I had a tendency to make the bodies thinner. Similarly I would pay attention to the angles that I drew them more extreme than I would draw them usually. Now let's move on to answering the question what makes Genshin's poses stand out and what should you pay attention to to draw similar poses. And first I will start with how I myself would have to change my way of drawing as an example. And first as a side note, the bodies I usually draw tend to be close to the tall male or medium male ones. I don't draw female characters that often since I am mostly interested in fandoms that include male characters. But here would be some things I would in general have to pay attention to. When it comes to the tall male body types I would say using more tapering for the limbs, making them appear wider at the start of one joint and thinner at the start of another. For the medium male body types it would be to make the legs and hips a bit wider. Which which would be the same for the medium female body types. Here we also add to make the arms thinner. For the tall female ones I found especially making a chest be higher up, kind of stretching the torso forward more was something I would have to adjust. This kind of makes sense when you look at the fact that I generally draw more male characters. Often female characters backs will be more curved while for male characters the backs will be more straight. I guess this shows that I'm more used to drawing male characters and postures. Let's get back to the small female body types. These are most like chibis, something I've almost never drawn before. I know many people find these proportions cute but I myself just don't find them that visually appealing. Here I would have to change mostly the torso making it a bit smaller while making the legs and hips slightly wider. A few general things I would have to pay attention to no matter what body type I would be drawing would be to arch the spine more and draw more extreme angles. Now for more of a general basic guide to drawing the poses and what to pay attention to. I start with the proportions that I used, specifically how they vary in the card illustrations. If you're interested in finding out more about the proportions that are used for Genshin characters overall, like how many heads tall the bodies for the different body types are, how wide the shoulders and hips are and so on, I would recommend watching my Genshin Impact art style analysis video. They talk about this in more detail. For this video I'm just focusing on the variations in the proportions for characters of the different body types. Here the width of the hips, chest, arms and torso 
can vary a bit for each character. Overall, the body type the character has is usually still recognizable though. Just the tall female and medium female body types look similar to one another to me at times. If you were to take a 3D model and pose it like the character, you would see not everything is consistent. Some examples where you can see this more clearly to me would be for the tall male body type, child's legs are very thin compared to Ryothosli's legs, which are wider overall. Ryothosli also has a wider upper body than child here, which can also be due to some developments in the overall Genshin illustrations over time since child's illustration is from 2020, while Ryothosli's is from 2023. Next, for the angles of body parts, here I notice that often the shoulders, hips and eyeline or head are at different angles to each other, making the pose more dynamic. What also can add to this would be that the upper body and the lower body as well as the head can also face different directions, so that the body overall twists and turns a bit. What's also common is that one leg will be more straight while one will be more bent, same can also be true for the arms. You will also rarely have some parallel lines from the arms or legs for example. The angles the upper and lower arms and legs have as as well as the torso are often different throughout the pose. Now let's talk about the perspective that's used in the card illustrations. Here you have a mostly front on one, which would mean the horizon line would be around the eye level of the character, but this can also vary. Some characters are viewed from slightly above or below at times. Nuvillette would be an example for a character that's viewed more from below, which makes him look more intimidating, whereas Toma would be an example for a character that's viewed from more above, which makes him look friendlier. Usually the body parts are not too foreshortened, but for Ito or Goro you would have a pretty for shortened hand, for example, as a few of the exceptions. Moving on to dynamic versus static poses, some of the characters are in more dynamic poses, leading to a lot of flow and motion added through the pose alone. For others, the pose can seem more static. Characters can sit, stand, walk, jump or float for example. If the pose is more static, more flow and motion is usually added through flowy outward parts such as capes or hair. Flow is an important element to look at in the cuts overall. Determining some motion lines throughout the pose can help to understand more and if you want to draw poses similarly to the cuts, I would recommend keeping this in mind, paying attention to how you use flow for the the limbs, the body parts, the outfit parts as well as the hair and also that the outfit and body parts can be affected by wind for example. Whether a more dynamic or static pose is used is often also connected to the character in the card, their profession, role and their personality. Often the pose conveys this a bit. More gentle poses are used for gentle characters such as Yunjin, Kazuha or Noel, while more expressive outgoing characters will often have more expressive poses, for example for Barbara, Heizo or Xingyan. This isn't always the case but in general making the pose fit to who the character is by for example using a more flowy pose for Kokumi and a more sneaky one for Laini is also important to keep in mind here. Often the character's vibe and the atmosphere and energy of the whole card and pose will fit to the character. Other than this, props, which are most commonly weapons but can also include a glass, a umbrella or a plushie for example, are added in as well at times. This can help to convey who the character is while showing the character interact with another object, which can make the whole pose more interesting. So what makes the poses expressive, dynamic and elegant? I would say a combination of the angles of body parts, very stretched out body parts, flowing parts and showing motion and choosing a pose fitting to the character. Since the whole exercise I did was basically drawing from reference using observation, let's now finally talk about some tips I have to improve observation skills. And I'm also kind of answering the question how could I have done the exercise I did in a better way here. I start with sharing a few insights from doing the exercise. Firstly, I found that tracing over the poses in the end, after already having drawn the pose multiple times, helped me to notice the differences more clearly, since I had drawn the leg with the same pose before for example, but would use slightly different proportions, I could really focus on what's different from how I would usually draw it. Next, I would mention that instead of looking at poses with a background of having drawn poses and characters many times before, try to distance yourself from this and rely on only observation, focus on the silhouette and lines, the changes of direction negative and positive shapes that the body parts form, in empty spaces, a triangle shape you recognize, how big different parts are in relation to each other and so on. It's good to observe in relationships. You can for example say that the finger is at the point where horizontally the hips are, so if you would make a horizontal line from the finger to the hips it would line up and then you can pay attention to it that this is also the case in your illustration. Through making these different relationships you can then make sure that all parts of the pose line up in a similar way as they do in the pose you're observing. And to draw the pose I would recommend to start with general body angles, bigger body parts such as the torso, the upper arm, the lower arm, the upper leg, the lower leg for the left and right side as well as the neck and head and then move on to smaller parts such as the hands and feet. What exact order you want to do this in is up to you and can be different for each artist. 
Here is how I determined I like to use guidelines to draw bodies and poses. I like to for one focus on angles using lines. Often the length of the limbs and torso can be included in here. I also like to add a line to the center of the torso or the head for example, just to make sure that the volume on both sides of the head or the torso would be around the same. Then I use circles to determine joint positions. Here I'm focusing more on the width of the body parts and the placement of the joints, not the direction. I ask myself how wide are the shoulders or how far is the distance between the left and right knee and so on here. And connecting both the lines and the joints would then lead to my first basic guideline drawing of the body. To bring in depth you can use cylinders, spheres and boxes for the different body parts to make sure they're in the right perspective. And for legs and arms I find drawing wraparounds, which would be if you for example take a band and wrap it around your arm, you would then have a wraparound around your arm and this can also help to show the perspective of the body part. For drawing the body I would then pay attention to the depth and that the perspective works to draw the final pose. So to me it's important to first get the relationships of the bigger body parts to work and then add in the hands, the feet, also the chest and the overall exact width of the body parts such as the legs at the end. I like to draw poses in a big to small way, so first checking that the bigger body parts line up to then add in the smaller ones and this would be how I like to really focus on observation and drawing the pose. As a fun exercise to think of the pose as in a combination of positions, angles and don't let your experience with drawing bodies influence you too much. You can also try flipping the pose upside down so it's not as recognizable as a body anymore to your brain and then you can try to draw this. I would definitely recommend experiencing with a few different methods to draw poses for once in a quick way, for example only using lines for all the limbs to focus on the angles of body parts or doing quick silhouette drawings here focusing on the silhouette of the character or doing body shape drawings where you could use a sphere for the head, cylinders for the arms and legs and a ribcage shape for the torso. Overall just using spheres and if you want to boxes to focus more on the perspective can help as well. You can also focus on just the positions of joints and then connect them with lines. When it comes to longer pose drawings afterwards I would suggest combining the methods I just mentioned, maybe first drawing some guidelines, then adding perspective and then the silhouette and so on. Each artist tends to have their own way of drawing bodies and this can even change with each character and pose you are drawing. Just looking more into these concepts and studying the fundamentals such as form, perspective and anatomy can help you with drawing poses, whether they are similar to Genshin's card illustration ones or not, a lot. Now that would be it for my takeaways from this exercise. With the many post drawings and recorded processes I have, I could imagine doing a lot of things. I thought maybe a guessing game where the process of drawing a pose is shown and you have to guess the character by the pose only could be fun. For example, like this you can test how well you remember all the Genshin cards. Let me know if you would look forward to this and you can also let me know your general feedback for this video in the comments. You can also check out my Patreon where I for example have the screen recorded process of drawing the basic body from my Genshin Impact Arsenal's this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you could take away some things and get inspired. Have a nice day and bye.